Hello everyone, welcome to Preface Nomad Junior. I'm Mr. Mark. Today we're running a scratch tutorial and we're going through the project Into the Jungle. Alright, so this project is actually more of an introductory project, so it's going to be a bit easier. And I'm going to start off with having three different sprites and one background. So let's just see all of them. So we have the lion here who growls. And we have a panther here which crouches. And the third one is a parrot in which it can go to different positions after being clicked. And it will also flap its wings in the process. So three animals with three completely different actions. Alright, so now let's log into the Scratch account first so that you can get into the Scratch main page. And from here we're going to click on Create. So this button here on the second left, Create. Let's give it a click first. So by doing this, you should be able to create a new project. And always remember the first thing we do after creating a new project is that we have to rename it. So over here we're just going to call our project. We're just going to call it Into the Jungle. And we have no need for this cat over here, so we're just going to delete it. And we delete it by going to the sprite, and then you can see the trash can here. Just give it a little click. There you go. Alright, so after deleting the cat, the first thing you want to do is to create the scenery of this whole project. So let's look back at the original one that's done already. As you can see, there are three separate animals, right? So there's three separate sprites here which all can do this specific thing. And also we have the title here, which is actually part of the backdrop. And obviously we have the huge backdrop of the jungle, which we will have to select. So let's just head back into Scratch first, into our own project. Let's go to the bottom right corner where you can see a blue button here that says choose a backdrop. Now there are four separate ways to choose a backdrop that we'll, we'll talk about in the future. For now, let's just click on the first one here. So this big one here that says choose a backdrop. Remember not the one next to it, not choose a sprite. You'll be using that later. So here, choose a backdrop first, click onto it. And our project is into the jungle, right? So we're gonna look for a backdrop to do with the jungle. Let's see what we can find. So right here, we can see the one that used the jungle one on the bottom left corner. Now obviously you could use something else too, whatever you like. Just click onto it, and there we go. Alright, so just a little reminder to all our coders out there. Always remember whenever you do something significant, you want to press on the Save Now button over here. So whenever it appears, make sure you press it. And this is to ensure that whatever work you've done, you can save it. So this prevents you from losing your work that you've done if you haven't saved it and then the, the whole system accidentally crashes, right? So where were we? We were at the part with the backdrop, right? So we've just we just selected the backdrop out and now it's time to add the title to it. So what we do here, let's just press into the stage right now and let's press into the backdrop tab. So it's right, it's right in between the code and the sounds tab here. Let's just click into it. And we're just going to delete this white backdrop here, which we don't need. So, right now we're in this little addition right here. So we have this little editor. And what you'll do first thing is to make sure that it says convert to bitmap here. This means that we're in a vector editor. I will talk about it in the future a bit more. But let's make sure that right now you're in the, in the part where it says convert to bitmap. And you can add text by adding, by clicking on this T here. Just clicking on the backdrop editor itself and just typing, you know, whatever. Now, the thing here is that purple is a bit hard to stand out, right? So we can choose a different color. For example, we can choose white here, and you just have to make sure that your text here is highlighted in the blue box, and then you can change to whatever color you want. So over here, since my project is called Into the Jungle, I'm gonna make that my title. And I can change the sizes by dragging onto these dots of the blue box. So see here, I can make it thicker, longer, bigger, whatever I need to. I can also change the font here. So back to the T, I can change the font here. I can change it to any different font I want. So I made it marker because it's my favorite one, but you guys can feel free to make it to whatever you want to. And finally, to make my words pop up a bit more, I can add an outline to it. So I'm going to click on this mouse here, and then I'm going to add an outline. So maybe let's try adding a black outline. So over here when the outline is just one, 
you can see that it pops out a bit more and in order to make it pop out even more I can make it to let's say free for example sorry let's just add it to free here and there we go we have a more popped up uh, title here we're going to save it and then let's continue on to the sprites alright so let's get to the scratch creation part and what we do here is that we put our mouse over this button here on the bottom right corner but next to the one for the backdrop so this one which says create a sprite once again it has four of the same icons here we'll talk about the four icons in the near future but for now let's just click on choose a sprite here and then if you remember what exactly are animals we need we needed a lion and panther and what I believe is a parrot over here so what I'm going to do is I'm looking for a lion here and since there's a lot of there's a lot of sprites here that that uh, scratch has given to us right what we can do is that we can select it by choosing the animals part first so that narrows down the sprites that we need to look for and we just get right here we have lion right let's just click on it to add it maybe drag it to a position you want to and let's do the same for the panther also same way where's my panther and it's right here and also we need the parrot so lower animals parrot there we go now what you see is that right now they're all completely different sizes from our original project so if you look at our original project you can see first of all the panther is facing the other way and also the parrot here is much smaller right so you can still so in scratch you have the freedom to edit the sizes as well as how each of the cost each of these sprites look so all you have to do is click on to for example let's try to edit our panther first it's now facing towards the right i want to face to the left what I can do is that I can click on costumes here once again it's right in between code and sound so when you click into the backdrops this says backdrops when you click into the sprites this should say costumes let's click into costumes and what you can do is that you can highlight this whole pan for first and you can click flip horizontal now this completely flips it over now you can see the panther originally has three costumes right and the reason why is because you can make animations by going through them so what we can do is that we have to flip all of the rest of the costumes so we have to flip all of them once again so highlight the whole panther make sure you don't miss out any parts so you might accidentally you might accidentally just end up flipping just one part of the panther which will make it look very very weird so we flip up we flip out the panther the line stays as it is it's completely fine our parrot is a bit big though right so what we can do is we can click on the parrot here and we can change its size so I think half of that size is good enough let's just change it to 50 and see how it, how it looks good enough looks like a parrot alright now we're done with that let's just save it for now so the reason why I chose these sprites from scratch is because they actually have these various abilities in which we can use to create animations so if you remember our previous project back then, let's click on the green flag, you'll remember that each animal has their specific you know, function or ability. For example, the lion here, it can growl. For the parrot here, if you look very carefully, whenever it's clicked, it moves to a new direction, but its wings also flap, right? And as for the panther, it crouches. And so when you look into it, the reason why they can do these is because within these costumes you already have these built-in different costumes and you also have sounds which you, you can utilize so with these here you can create much better animations so we've done a lot about designing the project right now and we I guess we're going to start with doing the codes here so at preface we teach this rule called steps to create and so what we do first is that we want to create the world first in which we created the backdrop here and the second thing to do is that we create the characters which we add the sprites to before we suddenly make them come to life by setting the codes giving them rules and the reason that we have this uh, creation process is because we want to really 
categorize the things that we need when we first start creating a project. So if we do them all together all at once and we and we just mix around the steps, it can become confusing to what we need. So it's always best if we really categorize it into the background, into the characters before adding the codes. So let's just start with the lion first, shall we? So if you remember, so let's just click into the lion first. So if you remember from our original project, what does the lion do? The lion doesn't move much, but rather what it does is that it growls, right? So this one's a rather simple one. First thing we do is that we go into events, okay? So events is how we kickstart something to happen. And here, how do we make the lion growl? We did it by clicking it, right? So here we grab the events here. We grab the event handler here. We grab this block when this sprite click. What do we want to do when we when this sprite is clicked? We want to growl. So naturally, you go into the sound section here, and then you can grab this play sound grunt until done. So now, let's just click the green flag, save it, and so now when you click the lion, supposedly, we'll growl. Now, after coding the lion, the second part would be the panther part. So let's just try code the panther first. So if we remember the panther, what it does when it's first clicked is that it crouches. But also, when we click it again, it will also change into multiple different costumes. So let's just count how many times the panther changes costumes when we click it. It changes twice, right? So no matter what happens, I click it once, it changes twice. I click it once, it changes twice. So in our codes here, the thing to do would be the same the same lock when the sprite clicked I want to change my costume twice so I go to looks and then I select next costume and since I need to change it twice I'm going to just drag two of them here right let's just see what happens so click it and whoa it only just changes once even though I have I have my codes here which tell me to change it twice now why is that the reason why is because in this process, the changing of the first costume happens too quickly. We don't even see it, so it just it just changes two costumes for you directly. So it literally just bounces from this costume all the way to the third one. So it changes twice already. Now, what we can do to solve this is that we can actually go to control and get a wait one second out. So what happens here would be when we click it, when we click it once again, so it will pause for a while before it changes. So we can make this pause a bit shorter by making it 0 0.5 seconds instead maybe. Let's just try and see what it, what happens. So there we go. So now it looks more like the original project. And the final thing to do is that remember when, when in the first click, the panther is always standing to begin with, right? So what we can do here is that we can actually get this block here called when green flag click. This basically means what happens when we click the green flag here. And here we want to switch the costume. We want to switch it back to the panther that's standing. So this panther A here. So we stay here. Switch the costume to panther A, please. Now, no matter how many times we click it or whatever it's going to look like, once we click the green flag, it will turn back to the standing panther. All right, so we're at our final part about coding the parrot, which is arguably probably the hardest one to code for. So let's just take a look. First of all, let's just take a look at the original project. So green flag, and it goes back to this laptop corner, right? So right here, first things first, we click on the parrot, and it moves to a random position as was well flapped his wings. Which one does it do first? Can we see properly? So what it does is that it clicks, we click it, it changes positions first and then it flaps its wings, right? So remember when it flaps its wings, it actually changes costumes twice. So it flaps its wings down and then back up, right? So let's just try to recreate what happened in the project before and let's just apply input into our own project, right? So what we have here is we have our parrot, right? And what we want to do first is obviously to move it first and then we're going to change its costume. So over here, we get the blocks of when this sprite is clicked. And then we know to move it, right? So here, we want to get the go to random position first. And afterwards, we change the costume here. So 
parrot B makes our parrot's wings go down, and parrot A makes our wings go up, right? So we're going to switch the costume so that we'll switch to parrot B, and then switch it back to parrot A. Now, if you remember from a past example with the panther, if we put two of these switch costumes together really closely, what will happen is that it will just look like one. It won't really look like there's two of them. So you will need to add the wait one second block in between these two. Before, changing it to perhaps like 0 0.5 so it really looks more like a wing flap. So there we go. And finally, what you want to do is that you want this parrot to always appear in the left top corner at the beginning. So in order to make sure that I can drag it around without it moving everywhere, I'm just going to disconnect these blocks first. Drag this parrot back to its position. Now you can see that its coordinates here, the x and y has been updated to minus 178 and 87. So all I have to do here is in the events block, I'm going to get the green flag click and then I'm just going to get the go to block here. So this allows the parrot to go back to its position no matter no matter where it is clicked to. So when I reconnect this, when this right click block over here, I can click it to wherever I want and it will do it will do whatever the parrot does. And no matter where it goes to, I can always drag it back by just clicking the green flag. Alright? Now, what we learned here is something called sequence. Because if you remember, we want to make the parrot goes to random position first before flapping its wings. And even as it flaps its wings, we want to make sure that there's a little pause so we can actually see the costume switch in action. So this is called sequence, and it is the way in which codes are read. They're read from top to bottom. So just like this example here, we've got the parrot to move and switch costumes. This is exactly how it works for any type of code. Alright guys, so just a quick recap of what we've learned today. We started off by learning about the steps to create, right? Which is the creation process which we use to build our projects where we build our world first and then we add the characters and finally set the codes, which are the rules. The second thing we learned about today are the sequences where we learn how the codes are read from top to bottom and how this is applied into our projects. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with our daily content. I'm Mr. Mark, and this is Scratch Tutorials on Preface Nomad Junior.